Hey guys, it's Chris and I'm back with another Witcher video talking today, The Witcher Episode 5, Bottled Appetites. Uh, this is another very critical story in The Witcher series to be a Season 1 episode in particular because it not only introduces Geralt and Yennefer to each other, but you start to get an idea of how Yennefer and what her main goal is throughout this series and it ties into Ciri a little bit as well. And one of her goals, of course, is to gain back her fertility which, of course, she gave up when she got her beauty back about 30-something years ago. So anyway, let's jump right into it. The Witcher, Episode 5, Bottled Appetites. All right, so another pretty damn good episode, I would say. Uh, they changed a lot of things from this short story like they have in every episode. They really cut them a lot shorter, but they still work fine, and I'm certainly no book purist or whatever, so I think the changes are fine. Um, it still gets across the main idea of the story. And again, as I mentioned, this is very important because this is not only when Yennefer and Geralt's relationship started, but it also gives you a lot of insight into Yennefer herself and what she's thinking about. Obviously, the main thread here is that she wants to have a child someday. She wants to gain back her fertility. As you remember in a previous episode, she lost her fertility because she literally had her ovaries cut out in that horrible procedure to gain her beauty, going back to one of the threads in order to gain something you have to give up something. And that was one hell of a price. Anyway, we open up with what's called a Doppler. This is like a shapeshifter, a changing, whatever. You've seen these in pretty much every fandom as far as sci-fi and fantasy. So again, it's showing you kind of the diverse cast of monsters or whatever in this story. And the difference here is, is they not only take their physical form to be able to be anybody they want to, but they also take some of their memories and all that as well. And of course, he took over the body of Malsak after he was killed, unfortunately. But remember, at least in season one, we're going through time jumps again. So it's likely we'll still see Malsak in the show. Again, as I mentioned, they did change a lot from the Last Wish short story. They kind of shortened it up a little bit and changed a few things as well. For example, when Geralt gets to the town of Wren to help Dandelion, or Yaskier in the show, when he goes up to meet Yennefer, it's basically the same thing. The Lord was naked and drunk in his house or whatever that he broke into. I love the part, by the way, where the guard was like, you know, money opens all doors, and Geralt pulls out his damn money and hits him right in the fucking face and says, I guess it does. <laughs> I thought that was fucking hilarious. Anyway, I'm sorry. But yes, he goes in. Basically the same idea, it takes her some juice, but for whatever reason in the show, they decided to make some weird orgy scene, which I, I thought was odd, I guess just for the sake of an orgy scene. But in the books, it's not quite that elaborate. She mistakes Gerald for a servant bringing her juice and then realizes that he's not, throws a spell at him, he's able to block it, she realizes he's a witcher, etc. And then she's the one who ends up taking a bath in front of him, but doing an invisibility spell. So they changed that up a little bit. And again, I won't go into this completely in detail, you saw the episode, but I do have a completely separate video, as I mentioned before, called The Last Wish Explained and it goes into a lot more detail about this story. But the basic idea for the show was to get these two together and get them to know each other a little bit and start their little love affair. The whole point of The Last Wish was to find out that it was not Dandelion or Yaskier who had the gin bound to him. It was actually Geralt, and we saw that with the wishes. So his first wish was for the thing to fuck off and get out of there so it did no more damage. It didn't kill Dandelion. He was able to be saved. The second wish was for that guard to burst, and he literally did. And then, of course, the third wish was what saved Yennefer's life, and that was the wish for them to be bound by love. So they didn't exactly show what he muttered under his breath, but the idea was if they were bound by love, the djinn could no longer kill her because in doing so, the djinn could not fulfill that wish if he wished them to be bound by love. So that means she had to live. So he didn't do it for a selfish reason just to get this beautiful woman to love him. He don't have a lot of problems with women. He just did it to actually save her life, but it becomes kind of a problem later. And then, of course, to kind of further Yennefer's storyline in this episode about her fertility and trying to gain it back, which will be a running thread, I'm assuming, through the rest of season one as well, is she wants to now capture the djinn, setting the magic trap that she had and still thinking that it was bound to Yaskier, wanting him to make his last wish. It didn't work. That's when she finds out, obviously, it's Geralt, bound to Geralt. Geralt figures out the same thing, saves her life. But the overarching theme here is that she wants to capture these powerful things like this djinn that could kill her so it could actually heal her and she could have her fertility back. Another important part of this short story and this episode is, in the show at least, he noticed her scars, which was a clue that she was not always this beautiful. She had a lot of problems in the past. That's obviously an important story arc as well for their characters to get to know each other. They're both really similar in the sense of they didn't choose what they became. He had to become a witcher and go through mutations and the horrible things. She was obviously sold off for for marks by her father to the council of mages and became a sorcerer herself 
So they're not so different in that regard, and that's part of why they bond so well anyway. But it always goes back to the question, is it natural or is it part of that wish that he made about them being bound by love? And then, of course, we got a little shout out to the games, I think, here as well. Anybody that played the games, or at least The Witcher 3, because that's the one I'm currently playing, you had the whole lilac and gooseberries. This is the scent that apparently drives Geralt crazy. And as a matter of fact, if you played The Witcher 3, when you're looking for Yennefer, now keep in mind The Witcher 3, just for context here, is not canon. It's actually a story that takes place after the novel, so it's like a sequel, but not official, not canon, whatever, according to the author anyway. But when he's actually looking for Yennefer in the game, that's how he describes her to people. Have you seen this girl? Dark hair, smells of lilac and gooseberries. So whatever this scent is, it apparently drives him fucking crazy. I don't know, it's kind of like the medieval version of Axe Body Spray. But of course, ultimately, this ends with Yennefer jumping Geralt's bones right there in front of Yaskier and the Elv as well. And they're doing it on the floor there as they watch. And the question again goes back to, is that because they were already attracted to each other? Which I think they obviously were by the time they spent together before this whole Jen incident happened. Or was that part of the spell that Geralt put on both of them for that matter? So that will always be a question in their mind. So I think it's pretty interesting. So still really enjoying this show couple more episodes to go and i'll be done with season one it's a shame we have to wait till 2021 for season two but again remember i also do have a more detailed breakdown and analysis of the last wish for those interested in the full story as far as the short story goes so that video will pop up as a card and be linked also in the description below anyway guys let me know what you think in the comments below as usual thank you for all the support especially you guys on patreon and a huge shout out to my executive patreon smokescreen producers and if you dig what i do here please give these videos a like comment and a share and of course, be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time.